call this meeting of the Ames City Council to order. I am not Mayor Hala. I am Mayor Pro Tem Betcher. So Mayor Hala and Council Member Junk are in Japan celebrating 30 years of sister cityhood with our sister city Koshu this week. So we will miss them, but uh, I know they're having a great time. We're going to open up tonight with our joint meeting with the Ames Human Relations Commission. So I will turn this over to Cassandra Ames to introduce the commission and get us started. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Like Gloria mentioned, I'm Cassandra Ames. I'm the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator. I'm also staff liaison to the Human Relations Commission, who is here today in order to present the 2022 annual report. And I'm going to let everyone do their own introduction, so you can take it away. And can I just hold oh. you there? Can you hear in the back? Yes? Okay. We've had some issues with the table, okay. so I'll just gotcha. act, ask okay. you to speak into the microphones. Thank you. Okay, let's let's start down here first of all. Well, let me, I'll just start here in this one. Uh, I'm Wayne Clinton. Somehow I got roped into being the chair of this 2023 year. We've got new members. Uh, Dr. Chen uh, is unable to be here with us this evening. He and I are the only two holdovers uh, from the, uh, the previous year. Uh, and much of what you're going to hear tonight uh, he was a part of the collaboration uh, uh, with uh, not only our annual report, but I'll also mention uh, the past members uh, that are not here. Uh, but anyway, I'm Wayne Clinton, chairperson of the commission. So when you see me out, you can say, hello, Mr. Chair, you know, I'll, <laughs> however you want to call it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll step in and be the next to the mayor. Uh, I did tell Cassandra that I'm going to be myself, and so this is what you get when you put me, the microphone in front of me. Which I know well. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm a former teacher, coach, longtime resident at Ames. This is my second stint serving on the Ames Human Relations Commission. But those of you that have known me for many years, and my wife Edna, know how vested we are in this particular area of what the Human Relations Commission is all about, and that is about making Ames a welcoming uh, community uh, where all people, regardless of age, ethnicity, whatever, national origin, you name it, uh, is feels that they have a, a place and a home here in our community. And so it's an honor for me uh, to represent the commission uh, tonight. And so our new two new members uh, that we asked to sit in uh, to just hear this report. So next year, one of them taking it over. <laughs> uh, so I'll pass the next, to, sitting next to me. Marty? Thank you, Wayne. Uh, I'm Marty Martinez. As I know some of you and not others, I look forward to opportunity to get to know you. You get to know <coughs> me. I, uh, this is the first time I've been on a Ames Commission. Um, really look forward to it. I've had the opportunity to serve on uh, some boards, some Iowa boards. Um, and uh, work with the police and their safe neighborhoods team. And, and so um, yeah, I'm really honored to be on this commission. I uh, look forward to, to my time with Wayne and, and the other members. Hello, I'm Angie DeWard. Uh, I was previously a member of the Art Commission for six years, past chair, chair, vice chair, all <laughs> the things um, for six years. Uh, and Running in tandem with that, I've been really involved in my school district. Um, my children go to Cape Mitchell Elementary, which is the most diverse school in town. So I've learned a whole lot about diversity in, in that neighborhood, uh, financially, socially, and, and so on. And so it's really kind of uh, gotten me super invested in, in the dynamics in our, in our city. And so that's uh, why I applied and was then appointed to this board. And I'm super excited to be working on it. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, much of what I'm going to cover this evening, even though the members of the city council, you have copies of the annual report and our strategic plan, but for the listening audience, uh, we want them to have a full scope about uh, who we are, what we're about, how we came to be, uh, and uh, some of the things that we achieved uh, last year and 
this also serves as a blueprint uh, for uh, the 2023 board as we move forward. We can look at the past, uh, build on that, uh, add uh, new things. Uh, we're excited about uh, having Cassandra uh, with us, uh, with her background and expertise, uh, that we can maybe expand our outreach and become much more viable uh, and uh, give citizens a greater awareness of what the Ames uh, Human Relations Commission uh, is all about and how we can uh, be a, a key uh, entity only for those who feel that they need a voice or someone to talk to uh, as they uh, navigate through uh, some things that they might encounter here. Uh, but overall, when we when I finished from the <coughs> report, I think not only the council, but the community of Ames should feel very good about the quality of life here, uh, the number of complaints that uh, we have received, how uh, they have been adjudicated or handled through the Iowa Civil Rights Commission uh, et cetera. And uh, so our, our, there are some challenges that I think we as a council, that as a commission, uh, I think I'd like to see uh, a little bit more uh, involvement, uh, but that's not necessarily, uh, the report is not going to necessarily say that we need more of that, but it's just a, that I like to be a hands-on type person. If there's an issue, in our community, I like to know about it, especially if I could talk to people, I can talk to businesses, talk to employers, uh, whatever, and try to uh, see if there's a, a, a means by which we can resolve whatever challenges they may think. Because many times it's a matter of perception uh, and first encounter in a given situation without uh, really understanding the whole process. So let me dive into it, and I ask the uh, council to indulge me a little bit as I highlight some of the things that are in the annual reports. First of all, the purpose of the commission, uh, the Ames Human Relations Commission, uh, purpose is to study the existence of discrimination in the community and work to minimize or eliminate it, to promote goodwill among the various racial, religious, and ethnic, ethnic groups in the city and cooperate with other organizations to develop programs designed to eliminate racial, religious, cultural, and intergroup tensions. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. But that's what we're all about. Uh, the purpose of chapter eight of the, of the Iowa City Code, chapter 14, uh, is to implement provisions of the Civil Rights Act and to provide for the general welfare of persons in the city of Ames by prohibiting certain discriminatory practices and to establish a commission, that's what our role is, to investigate complaints uh, of discrimination and to undertake education to prevent this. And so for us, it is more education, as you will see a little bit later uh, when I uh, make reference to one thing. Uh, it was in August of 2018, there was a lot of discussion amongst the uh, commission at that time and the city council, and we were directed not to adjudicate cases and instead refer all cases to the Iowa Civil Rights Commission, which is goes by the ICRC. And at the workshop, the council also discussed means of gathering additional information to inform uh, and adjust or revise ordinance and direct us to review data through the, the uh, Campus Climate Survey, Municipal Equality Index, and other available data, and to interact with Iowa State University and the Ames Community School District, as well as other uh, well-positioned, as well as any other well-positioned to uh, give input on diversity, equity, and inclusion in the community in order to recommend actions, action items, and to changes to the ordinance. So we've had very few of these 
over in my tenure here in the city, which is an indication of how well the city works towards developing this climate that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, the, this is the 2022 report. Uh, members of that uh, committee, uh, myself, I was serving as vice chair at that time. Uh, Jemai Fisher was chair uh, and Dr. Chen uh, was with us. Uh, Kushni Patel, Lynette Plander, uh, Madesh uh, Samanu, uh, and of course, uh, Deb Joe Rock was our city liaison member. Uh, and I really want to thank the city staff for really pulling this all together. We, you know, from our minutes and different things that we talk about at our meetings, uh, they are able to uh, pull this <coughs> together in a, in a form that is clear and easy to follow and so forth. So I certainly want to, again, commend staff for assisting us in this area. The next item is really to just highlight some of the things that uh, we accomplished in 2022 and as we look to 2023, uh, we're seeing some similarities of involvement in some of these and actually taking on a few new things that are just coming uh, uh, to, uh, to our attention. But in January of 2022, uh, the, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration was held in the city auditorium uh, on January 16th. And this is where uh, Chair Jemiah Fisher presented the Humanitarian Award to Annika Mondale uh, as an individual and the COVID-19 Emergency Fund for Story County Immigrants uh, as an organization. And uh, I was very fortunate to serve on the organizing committee uh, for the MLK uh, Day and will continue to represent the city, hopefully in the uh, years to come. Uh, Chair Fisher actually uh, represented the commission on KSI on January 20th, highlighting the work. Uh, I don't look forward to doing that, but I guess I might have to this year. We'll see. Uh, then in February, uh, Commissioner uh, Chen, uh, and I can never pronounce that name, that first name, uh, so that's why I call him Dr. Chen, led a uh, collaboration with the city uh, of Ames Media Production uh, to create a video celebrating the Chinese New Year. This was our first time, I believe, that we did something of this nature. It was posted to the social media uh, website and presented on February 1st. And at the February 8th City Council meeting, uh, Dr. Chen accepted a proclamation from Mayor Haler recognizing the Chinese New Year. And again, uh, this was the, the continuation of other events and recognition of the uh, Chinese, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander in our community. And one thing that I will tell you that I learned is that the uh, Asian American and Pacific Islanders really is the largest minority group in our city. And so that was new uh, to me. Uh, and so I look, I had uh, enjoyed further learning more about them. Then on, uh, then for Black History Month, the Ames Public Library had an open dialogue series titled Sharing Our Stories and Black Voices in Ames. And believe it or not, somehow I was asked to be the first uh, person uh, to share my story uh, at uh, on this uh, particular series. And Jemai Fisher, who was our chair, was the moderator. And I thoroughly did enjoy that. Uh, and from that, you know, there was a follow-up opportunity for me to actually share my story and my family story coming to Ames uh, to the Ames History Museum lecture series. So who knows? Then in March, we began drafting the 2021 uh, annual report. Uh, we co-sponsored a residence for the hip hop duo, The Reminders, that uh, uh, was between March 1st and March 5th. And this was uh, 
uh, really a songwriting group that held interactive lectures, uh, uh, lyrics, workshops, and a concert in the city auditorium that was very well received. Uh, and I wanted to thank the city uh, for helping uh, to bring this group uh, to our community. April 22nd, uh, April of 2022, we partnered with the city Ames Housing uh, Director, Coordinator Vanessa Baker Latimer uh, to run the Fair Housing Month advertisement in the Story County Sun and Chair Fisher presented a Home for Everyone Award to Alan Christie at the April 26th City Council meeting. Uh, and again, we have our annual uh, election in April each year. And at that time, uh, Jemai Fisher was reelected and I was elected again to serve as vice chair uh, for that respective year. Uh, we also came up with um, uh, AHRC bookmark, which is a bookmark that was printed for the distribution at the various events that we attended, which gave citizens an opportunity uh, to know a little bit more about us, uh, but hopefully uh, they could also share with their uh, uh, young students uh, for their reading material and things of that nature. Uh, in May, we co-sponsored the inaugural Asian American and Pacific Island Heritage Month celebration, and this was held on May 7th. And this was at Iowa State University. Over 300 people uh, were there. Uh, and Commissioner Chen, he participated in organizing this event. Uh, and uh, there was an essay uh, for uh, AAIP, and it was entitled In My Eyes. And there was opening remarks from Mayor Hala. And this year, of course, we had an opportunity again uh, to uh, continue for the second year. And the actual state of Iowa actually recognize, recognized uh, the Chinese uh, and Pacific Islanders uh, heritage, uh, et cetera, which I thought was extremely uh, uh, terrific. Then in June, we co-sponsored the Juneteenth celebration on June 18th at the Banshell Park. Uh, and uh, this year, uh, it's going to be held on the 19th. I encourage as many of our citizens, uh, 17th, Saturday the 17th in the <coughs> afternoon. I believe it's from 12 to noon, noon to 4.30. Noon to 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have made a contingency plan in case you're listening that in case of rain, it will be moved to the city gymnasium. Uh, so it will still be held this year. Um, then going on, we approved the 2022-23 budget uh, on June 6th. We held joint meetings with the city council on June 28th to present the annual report and a cooperative agreement at, uh, with the Iowa Civil Rights Commission. And of course, Commissioner Medes uh, Samanu uh, moved away to Ames to continue his education at Clemson University uh, and uh, so we gave him a great send off. No activities in July, August. We hosted uh, an informational table at the National Night Out on August 2nd. And we had an opportunity to connect uh, with uh, members of the Ames community uh, and educated them on the role of the commission plays in Ames. And let me just, one thing I was amazed that there were at least five people that have been living in Ames most of their lives that when they came up to our table, they said they had never heard of us. And so it made me say, realize that we can do more to help educate and outreach. Uh, but the good part about it is, is my comment was, well, I'm glad you didn't need the services uh, from us. Uh, and But if you know people, who have had some discriminatory issues, uh, let them know how to contact the city office uh, or the Human Relations Commission, and we will make sure that uh, their voices are heard. 
So that was a very enlightening uh, experience for me. And it's something that we will continue to help promote to do more outreach, more educational things uh, throughout this year and in the, in the future. And then in September, uh, we had a trivia questions on social media uh, during uh, Latinx Heritage Month. Uh, we uh, welcome a new commissioner in October, uh, Kushni Patel, uh, a student at Iowa State. Unfortunately, she was only able to attend about three meetings, uh, but her studies and so forth uh, didn't allow her to continue throughout the year. This is a position that we're still hoping to add one more. We really do need representation from the student sector at Iowa State uh, as what we've had in the last several years, which I think was a, a excellent conduit and a connection for us. Uh, we uh, then in October, uh, we continued to work on our strategic plan uh, through the 2023 to 25 strategic plan, which is uh, also uh, has been finalized and I'm happy to say that we will continue to work to add on to update it as uh, need. Uh, we promoted and attending the 10th annual Ames Chinese Cultural Festival in October. And we also uh, uh, helped uh, with organizing the Ames Chinese Language Academy that was held at the public library. And again, uh, the opening remarks was from uh, Mayor Haler at that event. And then each year in November, the 2022 Symposium on Building Inclusive Organizations was held on November 1st. I was able to attend along with a uh, uh, couple other members of the commission. Uh, then I was far blessed to be able to participate, Dr. Chen and I, uh, with the interview process uh, for the city's director of equity and inclusion, uh, the DEI coordinator. Uh, and we did have some wonderful candidates and we selected the best of the best. <laughs> I don't think I had much to do with that, but I'll just take a look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, December selected the humanitarian award, and this went to Maria Celeste Gonzalez Chavez. Uh, and the humanitarian award is usually presented each year during the uh, Fair Housing uh, Month uh, uh, recognition. The next uh, portion, first of all, let me stop just for a minute. Are there any questions on any part of that that I just went through just from the council standpoint. Many of you have already, it's very similar to what you've seen in the past. Now the next part. Um, Wayne, Yes. on the next part, could you, in the interest of time, highlight sure. some of the, the main yep. points I, that, I, that we can that take I away from gonna, this? That's what I was really gonna do there. This, this first part to me that shows our community mm -hmm. engagement, involvement and so forth. This next part is where the Commission works with the city and the citizens of Ames through the mayor's office uh, with the Iowa Civil Rights uh, Commission. And uh, we receive reports based on uh, what is received uh, from individual uh, members of our community that may feel that there, there may be some form of discriminatory uh, 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 activity uh, that they needed to have addressed. And because, as you I've mentioned earlier, we don't adjudicate these ourselves now, these reports uh, are handled through uh, the, the city. Uh, they are then forwarded on to the ICRC. Uh, we get the same report that is shown here uh, with very little other input other than uh, just a compilation of data uh, that is basically uh, collected. But I will just highlight uh, the main areas of complaints, including employment, there were 16, housing three, public accommodation two, uh, and uh, one complaint involving both employment and public accommodation. 
So overall, what this graph shows to the council and to us is there have been a steady decline uh, in the number of complaints uh, filed by citizens within our community. And I'm very happy with that. So notable changes between 2021 and 22, there was a 7.4 decrease in complaints overall, educations decreased from two to zero, employment decreased from 18 to 17, housing decreased from five to three complaints, and public accommodation increased from two to just three. So overall, when you look at the chart and you look at the graphs, uh, I think this again shows a very good uh, breakdown of the nature of the complaints that are forwarded on to the Iowa Civil Rights Commission uh, and as a testament to uh, uh, the, what all of us as citizens, not only the city council, the lead that you show through the mayor uh, and uh, the various departments, but also our business community uh, and the community at large working together in cooperation to provide this type of a community uh, where people can enjoy quality of life and feel very good. So the summary of this basically is that there was overall decreases in complaints. Uh, and normally the Iowa Civil Rights Commission uh, gives us a chart that outlines the basis of the complaint, what the area was, the cause of action, and the result. And in many cases, uh, you will see where it'll say closure or administrative uh, closure, or there may be one or two incidents where it's still open. But by and large, uh, this again is just an excellent report. So the last area uh, is our strategic plan from 2022 uh, year. And this is really the guiding blueprint. The past board worked very hard in taking a look at what we had done in the past and realized that we had a lot of information out there that we really never touched on. We wanted to make sure that in this report, these are things that not only uh, we are, will be able to do, but will have a direct impact to educate the citizens at large. And so uh, I won't go through all of that, but our strategic goal, first of all, was advocacy, which we do a great job. And we are doing uh, uh, quite a number of things uh, to continue that. Uh, our second strategic goal is an information and analysis where we will actually study the existence, the character and cause and extent of discriminatory practices, and then uh, using resources to gain information. And again, to work with partners. You know, this is the community of all of us. And, and so we have to be able to reach out and find out ways to connect uh, to have the type of city that we're so proud of. Uh, we also have, uh, under one of the ob objectives, is to partner with city and community members to learn about discrimination and how to decrease the risk. Uh, we try to identify opportunities for other information from community members. Um, and then we go to a public awareness and effective communication. And this public awareness is the ongoing uh, goal of us is to make sure that citizens are aware of who we are and how we can assist if needed uh, and continue to promote uh, all the good things about quality of life living here in Ames. So uh, I'm going to uh, not go through each of the uh, other goals under the strategic plan, but, but to let you know that it is this plan that we believe is very workable, it's very doable, it's concise, uh, and there probably may be some things that may come up 
that are not necessarily here, but when that happens, we will ad address that at that time, working with Cassandra, then working through uh, the council uh, and so forth, if need be, uh, in addressing any things that uh, uh, we may have. So overall, um, I think the important thing, the takeaway that I take is that I'm proud that I live in this community mm. and what it represents and the people here working collectively together. Now that doesn't mean that there's not going to be once in a while something that might come up. But I think we have the people and the tools in place to address it and to help anyone that may have some issues or figure out how they can best learn from whatever situations that they're in. So our business partners are very much a part of what makes Ames such a viable community. And again, I want to thank the, the, the council for allowing us to serve in this capacity and for you to give us further guidance. And so at this time, I will ask if there are any questions, is there more direction you think you need from us? Uh, please let us know. <coughs> I'll tell these other people to take it on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the, uh, the overview of the last year and for all the good work that the commission is doing and will continue to do. Council, do you have any further questions for the AHRC? I have one question. Um, we have an unusually large group in attendance tonight. So maybe I could ask maybe a softball question that would be helpful for them because you think a lot about how to make Ames a welcoming community. So as a state, we've been sitting around 3 million for a long time and our demographics are not working in our favor. For as a state, in order for us to make progress, we're gonna have to be more inviting as a state, invite new people to come live here. And we want our communities to be inviting. Could you give us one or two practical things that we as a community can be doing to make Ames more inviting? Any, anything on your short list? Oh, wow. That is a loaded question. Uh, something that... Something practical. What are, what are things that we as community members can do to make Ames more welcoming? Well, you know, when we first came many, many years ago, there was a committee that was a welcoming committee. When newcomers came, there was a group of people met with those families, tried to let them know about who we were, what we were about, help connect them to various uh, things, aspects of the city that they might not be aware of, who to contact and how to go. Uh, but we also set up some opportunities to meet with them more frequently, socialize, and so when people see that, they see a community that really cares about them and want to make them feel a part. So that's a simple thing that can be done. And it doesn't take a charge from the, from the council. It just means that we need a few citizens saying, hey, you know, if we know such and such is coming in, some of our realtors tell us that new people are coming in and bought a home. Uh, is there someone that can want to take on this chat. Uh, so I think that's one of the simple things. But when you talk about uh, many people today are starting to hear more about, particularly our community. Uh, I see people at the mall or, or the shopping centers all the time. And if I've never met them before, I personally go up and introduce myself, tell them I'm a long time resident's name, ask them what their experience has been, tell them that I'm on the Human Relations Commission if they have any questions, concerns, or issues that they can reach out to me or the city uh, in those regards. And, you know, I, so often they turn to me and say, thank you. You know, you're one of the first persons that really have come up and done that for us. And you, you, it's little things like that that we, we all can do to make people uh, feel good. And I know some of you do it, because I've seen you do it also out in the, in, in the public. But I think 
if there are other members of the of the community, uh, not necessarily uh, from our uh, church community, uh, but just citizens in general who have that passion for connecting with people uh, that can spread goodwill will go a long way because then the word gets out. Uh, but remember, employment is still going to be the key that's going to keep people here if there are job opportunities and they can see it as a long-term situation rather than a short term. So I'll have to ask Marty and Angie if they, they've been around Ames a long time, if they might have just one or two things to add to anything that I may have said. That was really, that was really well said uh, with the employment and housing um, and you're reaching out to um, uh, cultural communities in other, other cities, other, other states. Um, uh, paperwork, documentation, again, I remember that welcome packet that I received when I moved here in 88. Um, and not only that packet, but like you said, following that up, giving an opportunity to follow up with people. Um, uh, yeah, but, I, but again, I think that, that uh, the brochures that we have, again, uh, seeing um, people of all different um, uh, uh, cultural ethnicities yeah. and uh, and uh, uh, abilities, and yes, I think yeah. that's uh, very welcoming. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, to to that end, and uh, and to kind of answer Doctor uh, Mr. Garten's question, um, I think we all let things divide us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that you you there's oh they have more or less money than we do. They are a different skin color. They're a different political, you know, party. Uh, those those are all dividing lines that have become, I think social media obviously is a big reason for it, but but they've become more and more marked over time, um, you know, exponentially. And I think one of the best things that we as citizens can do is just reach out to people who are on the other side of whatever our line is. I mean, that that's that's a silly thing to say and and mm -hmm. there shouldn't be dividing lines but just to reach out to people who have differing opinions than you or different situations is is the best thing that you can possibly do to make it a welcoming city i think that's a very powerful uh sentiment we talk about that if all your friends look like you and vote like you you probably need some new friends <laughs> yes absolutely right? it's so that's very powerful so thanks yeah. thanks for what you shared tonight any other questions? Do you, do you feel like you'd be empowered to bring us ideas for other, you know, um, celebrations or awards if you saw a need for them or you, I mean, it seems like you would, but that's, I guess that's my question. Yes, the answer to that is yes. We are looking at that and uh, beginning to connect with different groups uh, about, you know, their culture and their celebrations and how we can, you know, all learn more about them as a community. Yeah. Cool. So you'll yeah, hear more. Thank you for it. asking. I mean, yeah. just how yeah. you asked that, it, it was encouraging to me. Just like we yeah. can, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was part of a capital arts grant group um, that was here through through that the the council funded it uh, recently, and one of the things that uh, it wasn't very fleshed out, so we couldn't select it, but there were some great ones for Latino groups. Um, that's that's an area that I that I noticed that we can reach out to. Um, there are all kinds of different groups who I think would be absolutely valuable uh, to hear more from their from their from their groups uh, in our community. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I appreciate your uh, your thoughtfulness on this, and absolutely you are empowered to bring ideas to council. Um, we count on you to do that, especially in, in these important areas of human relations. If there are no other council questions, I'll move on to commission comments. Do any of you have any comments? Yes, again, thank you for the opportunity to serve. This is a great opportunity and uh, something that I look forward to being able to give back in just a small way that I possibly can. Yeah. Great. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn this joint meeting? Move to adjourn. Certainly. Oh, we do. Yep, got to accept it. Okay, well. Move we accept the annual report. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that we accept the annual report. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. The report has been accepted. Now, um, <laughs> do we move, have a motion for adjournment? Move we adjourn the joint meeting. Second. I moved and seconded. We adjourn. All those in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Continue the good work. We'll be moving on from good news to more good news with a presentation. I'm not sure where the lights are for this. Want to do that first? Wait, mm, Corey. Yeah. Should we call the meeting to order first? Did you do? Did we do that? I didn't do that. Let's do that first. <laughs> so what happens when you bring in the, the second team? <laughs> I'll call this meeting to order. <laughs> We're an exciting bunch here. There's nothing more real than reality government, right? <laughs> and I don't know whether I'm under the light here or not. I'm going to be turning this over to, Jeff. to Chief Huff, who's going to be presenting a department award of valor. Thank you. I'm going to ask Commander Tuttle to come up. She is the recipient. On June 2nd, 2022, at 6.51 p.m., officers from agencies throughout Story County were dispatched to Cornerstone Church in Ames, Iowa, for a report of shots fired in the parking lot. Commander Jason Tuttle was off duty at the church attending a meeting. While in the meeting, Jason heard a phone call to one of the pastors stating a shooting had just occurred in the church parking lot. Jason immediately ran out of the meeting to the parking lot. Jason was armed, but only wearing his police polo with a, without a ballistic vest. Jason responded to the location of the shooting. He inquired with witnesses where the suspect was located. The witnesses stated the suspect was near a truck in the parking lot. Without hesitation, Jason approached the suspect's vehicle to confront the threat. He located the suspect who still had a gun in his hand. Jason confirmed the suspect was deceased and worked directly with arriving deputies to remove the gun and start life-saving measures for the two victims the suspect shot that day. Commander Jason Tuttle displayed impeccable bravery and courage on June 2nd, 2022. He acted selflessly as he quickly confronted the threat, exposing himself to great bodily harm or death. He was aware of the large number of youth attending the night's activities and put himself in personal hazard to ensure their safety. Commander Jason Tuttle distinguished, distinguished himself with his acts of bravery and should be commended for his actions to protect the citizens of this community. I want to acknowledge your bravery in the face of extraordinary danger, and it is my honor to support the recommendation of our awards committee and bestow upon you the department's highest honor, the Award of Valor. This award also comes with a designation that goes on the uniform, and so I'm going to pin that on. Did I just get the shirt?
Jeff's now such a good hitter. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Commander Tuttle and to all members of the Ames Police Force for keeping our community safe and going above and beyond in cases like this. Gloria, well deserved. Gloria, I'm quest I'm question. Are any of Commander Tuttle's family here? Good question. <laughs> Could we have the family up maybe for a photo? Are there thousands of you out there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope that's in the right place. <laughs> The next item on our agenda is the consent agenda, and staff has asked me to pull item 25. Does council have additional items to pull from the agenda? Mayor Pretend would like to pull item 14. Others? If not, do we have a motion to approve consent minus items 14 and 35? So moved. Second. Was it 25? 35. 35. So it's been moved and seconded. Do we approve it? Um, roll call. Second. Aye. Burton. Aye. 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 Uh, Tim, you pulled item 14. Yes. Um, when this matter came up, this is the approving the contract with Ames Economic Development. I think there was an oversight on council's part that we had wanted this to be uh, funded at the requested amount of 175,000. Um, and I would move that we uh, amend the consent item to make the amount 175. And Steve, if you could speak to the issue of the source of funds, just for the record. I think I would recommend, as I said, during the budget meeting, it comes out of the hotel motel tax available balance. So I, I would move that we amend the amount to 175 to, with the funds to come out from the hotel uh, motel tax. I'll second. Is there discussion? If not, um, I guess this is now a, a funding request, so probably, well. Well, I was just, just curious, did we discuss it or? Okay, yeah, and there's remember. actually a note not in the that minutes. I, not that I disagree. Um, I just want to make sure we're not um, yeah, changing there's a, it. Yeah, there's a note in the minutes that says there's a, a separate request for an additional 25. Steve makes note that if we're going to approve it, we should have a separate discussion about it coming out of Hotel Motel, and then we don't ever we, actually I do see. that. So Okay, yeah, gotcha. So I'm going to ask Mark whether we can actually have this vote now if we... We're going to have a discussion of it coming out of Hotel Motel, but we never had that discussion. Yeah, we just, it's on the agenda. Or is this the discussion? Yeah, good question. Sure. Huh? Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or is this the discussion now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just a mini. Well, <clears throat> well the, the item is on the agenda, so you can discuss it now and have that discussion now and then Perfect. vote on it. And we're just amending the contract, so it's not. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Grace? Mm -hmm. Am I interested in specifying for the, uh, the organizations that you'd like us to do between the outside hotel contract? It's the uh, AEDC I've, contract. It's the AEDC yeah. contract. Yeah. It's 14. Item 14. Yeah. Uh, and maybe it wasn't clear. AEDC. Yeah, sorry about that. So is there further council discussion of the motion? Yes, that's if not, then I think we will do a roll call since that's it is a, a budget item. Aye. 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 Aye.
Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on from consent. No, 30, no, 35. Move one pulled by staff. The uh, item 35 was pulled by staff for lack of a bond. So is there any others? We, we can move on from that. Um, next item on the agenda is public forum. This is the time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business other than those that appear on the agenda. And if you choose to speak, please understand that I will limit your, your comments to three minutes. And Richard? You. Um, 40 years ago, I walked across Iowa twice, and, and I consider walking to be more my exercise. It's like a, doing it for a thing, my family, and it's like um, rag is coming to Ames on the thing, and it's like, I had this idea of like handing out some of my buttons there for the thing. And it's like, I talked to Renee this morning and she said I should talk to the people over the, the, the city. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, over on Main Street over there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when I talked to them, they said it's a $750 fine to, to a $750 budget thing, and it's like, I didn't, uh, it seems a little exorbitant to me to hand out buttons, and it's like, I mean, I don't know. You know, it, it's like I have enough to, to, I mean, I took some to the school board meeting last month, and I asked if I could do, donate some to the ones that, that I had made to the school board to give to the students in, in exchange of having an assignment for all the kids in junior high and high school. And they said they couldn't do it. Um, I thought it was a pretty good assignment. And it's like I gave you some of the buttons and I mean, I have this idea of making a new one. You know, but it's like if I have to pay seven hundred and fifty dollars to 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 give away my buttons at Ragbri, it's like I mean, I don't understand the laws of money very well. You know, it's like I was been a day trying to give away a dollar bill that said, "Please let us be naked in the library," and and I know I told you guys this a little bit earlier in the city council meeting. Whereas, like, they called the staff of the library and they banned me from being at the library for a week. Um, you yes, know, Richard, like, um, I think we're, we're at the three-minute mark, so thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at public forum? Richard, there's somebody you can talk to at the city. We'll get this clarified on handing out buttons. <clears throat> Definitely. If, if I mean, they listen to you, they told me that, 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 that they don't have any room for any speakers or anything like that for me to perform anything to play my harmonica. Richard, thank you. And council, I'll ask that we not continue the conversation. Um, I think oh, no. staff has noted that we will um, look into what that rule is that's keeping Richard from distributing the, the buttons. Um, if there are no other speakers for public forum, I'll move on to administration and we will be hearing the presentation of the final draft of the climate action plan. All right, well, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Um, our discussion tonight on the Climate Action Plan is gonna be a little bit different than it has been in previous meetings because we are closing the loop on our three-year planning process. So if you recall, we started out with a greenhouse gas inventory to know where we were at with our 
carbon emissions. We moved into um, setting the target with um, SSG's assistance. And um, from that, they modeled um, the six big moves. And so we had a presentation on um, those big moves that we would need to do and action steps to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. From there, uh, staff uh, took a several months um, um, time to analyze those big moves and those action steps for you and, and look through the lens of, of uh, the reality that we have around us in terms of um, state laws, finances, um, other types of feasibility um, impacts. And um, from there, we turned that information back over to you into SSG, and um, they came up with the final draft of the Climate Action Plan. And all through this process, we have uh, used an engagement plan to solicit input from um, the public, from businesses. We used um, the individuals on our uh, supplemental input committee, as well as our internal technical team. And so uh, the document that you have before you tonight is that final version of the Climate Action Plan. And uh, we are asking that um, you accept that plan. And we have uh, Naomi and Eric with us uh, this evening for one final uh, meeting. And um, they are here to help answer any questions that you may have. Um, and Eric can talk a little bit too about the public input um, that we had received and how that was incorporated into this final version. Am I coming through loud and clear? Yes, yes, yes you we are. can hear you. Okay, perfect. Good evening, everybody. We're very excited to be here. It's been um, a journey. It's been a lot of work. It's been quite the effort from all fronts, not just from the consultant side, not just for us, but for everybody involved, um, from the supplemental input committee to the steering committee to the public input we received, the city staff. Um, it's been a lot of work and, and we're finally here, so we're very excited about that. Um, we met about a month ago, a bit less than a month ago, um, or more than that actually, to go through the, the draft plan. And, and since then, since April, we, re we received uh, public feedback, so we've incorporated that in the plan. It's mostly minor tweak, minor, minor tweaks, minor changes, uh, additional information for clarity. Um, especially around questions that have come up uh, last time we presented. So we've added uh, some clarifying information. We've clarified some of the financials with additional information um, and uh, some of the graphs as well. The biggest change we've made was adding a paragraph to the executive summary talking about what it means to adopt a climate action plan. And we've talked about this before through our sessions uh, with the steering committee and with other um, groups, but um, it was worth putting in, in writing at the beginning just to clear up any misconceptions of what that means. And it is, this is a high level strategic document. It's a framework. Um, it's meant to be adaptable. It's meant to be uh, looked at on a yearly basis and um, be a, a higher level document. It is not uh, by adopting the plan, it is not a commitment uh, for the city of, of Ames to do every single thing that's in that plan and every single step. This is a high-level guiding document, and those steps will be um, uh, decided after following that guiding document uh, on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, Naomi, I don't know if you wanted to add anything there. Yeah, no, just to also add that uh, we're very, as Eric mentioned, we're very excited. It's been a, it's been a good three-year journey, you know, too. Um, and so we're very much looking forward to the discussion tonight and, of course, answering any questions um, that Council um, may have. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> back to you. I appreciate Thank the you. fact, sorry, that I appreciate the fact that you added that executive summary comment about the, um, the actual um, implementation of aspects of the plan. I think that's very helpful for the readers. Great, glad to hear it. Um, and I'll pass it back to you that those were the updates from last time. All right. Well, it has mentioned by Eric and Naomi, so, so even though the plan um, is in its final version, um, 
the rubber meets the road after this. And um, that will be done through an annual work plan that we will um, be looking at um, by using those seven um, initial implementation strategies that were discussed in the staff report in November. Um, those are the things like the, the pilot retrofit program um, for a neighborhood, um, looking at our waste to energy system and um, a different way of um, um, offering recycling and uh, collecting garbage, um, just a variety of, of those seven steps and how we can um, implement those those things, knowing that there are a lot of factors out there that um, will be influence, influencing this along the way. So I think it's really important uh, for us to remain nimble, for us to remain flexible um, and, and change with uh, the way technology um, brings about its change, um, um, looking at the fiscal um, feasibility of implementing this and achieving um, the, the steps um, as well as um, the staff time it takes to um, pull all of this together. So um, I, I'll leave it at that and um, open that up for any questions. Council, do you have any questions for the consultants or for our team here on the ground in Ames? I have a couple. Um, and I don't know how to reference the page numbers, um, but under implementation for increased active transportation and transit use, one of the items under implementation is car-free zones downtown and near ISU. Um, I was wondering if someone could speak to, to why we would, I think, discriminate against people who may not have the ability without automobiles to participate in the life of the community. Is that something that we want to have in this document? How does I don't that, remember this being in here. How does that follow? I'm sorry. So we we spent time tonight talking about making Ames a welcoming community. Mm -hmm. There are some members of our community uh, that they require a car to access parts of the community. And so the idea of having a car-free zone in our downtown area near Iowa State seems antithetical to that. And so I think there are lots of things we can do to encourage um, uh, the use of bicycles and other forms of transportation, but do it in a way that does not preclude others who would need uh, cars to access aspects of our community. Is that something that we, we, we want to have in here? I guess I'm, I'm not sure that it equals what you, what you think it will equal in terms of access. Um, I, I think there are a lot of different types of abilities and challenges related to that. And some people maybe would find car traffic to be scary if they are maybe less able to move than you or I. So maybe a pedestrian or a car free zone might be better for some. I don't know that I don't know that that's true, but I don't know that it's not. And so I think that I'm not sure that what you're claiming would follow is actually would would necessarily be a result of a car free zone. So if we wanted to amend this tonight, is there an amendment process? Can we move to an amend? And I would just take votes up or down on things. I don't want to belabor it. Is that possible? We can. Is this amendable? Yeah, it's yeah, we can. I guess I was thinking of that item as more of like a pedestrian friendly area, sort of like an Iowa City type, like a, a small, not like mm -hmm. a gigantic section of the city just walled off yeah. to cars. I was thinking of it more as like a specific business district type pedestrian oriented area. I think most cities that implement pedestrian areas are implementing them in ways that allow accessible parking very near right. the pedestrian area. So while you might not be able to drive down one street because it's closed as a pedestrian area, you may have the ability to park near those buildings on another street and still access them via vehicle. If, if that's and, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm seeing Eric nodding on the screen there. <laughs> Definitely, I think um, it's it's mentioned in the report, and I think it's part of Ames's philosophy also to, to look at everything with an equity lens, also, and that would definitely be the case with 
any implementation uh, recommendation, and especially this one, um, it, it doesn't. It, the idea is not to prohibit uh, people with limited accessibility from accessing uh, certain uh, services or different parts of, of the city. It can very well be um, what has been said, where it's uh, it's seen with the lens of accessibility and making sure everybody who who uh, needs it to be accessible has that and definitely uh, there's that flexibility in the idea in there to, to do it the right way. I, I appreciate that clarification. I think I was stumbling on the phrase, the word zone. Uh, that sounded broader than uh, what's been described. So thanks for the clarification. And then um, under the housing, um, I want to clarify this idea of uh, net zero versus net zero ready. Um, and so under this plan, um, what would we be requiring for new housing? So we've added um, a glossary term to, to help with that clarification for, so we have in the glossary both net zero and net zero ready. Um, net zero ready basically is everything but having uh, renewable energy generation, so solar rooftop TV on site, and net zero would include that. And, and so um, would this be a requirement? And is that something maybe, Steve, you could speak to? Can we even require that? Well, I don't. I don't think they're asking for a requirement, and certainly uh, this is a plan. You will adopt the final policy, so then you'll speak to the issue whether it's even allowed as a requirement. Uh, you know, in the state, the state will allow us, uh, or you want to offer it as an uh, an option by trying to incentivize people to do it. But I don't think it's a mandate. It's the plan does not mandate the council. I'm not sure it's legal. I'm not sure you've adopted that policy yet. So those are discussions we'll have when we talk about implementation. So if people are afraid that you're mandating uh, these things, I don't think that's the case. That's how I interpret the, the whole plan. Same. I, I mm -hmm. looked at all of these as recommendations that then we would determine if, how, when they're implemented right. um, going forward. I mean, that's going to be another council. Um, Pardon me? My, that's going to be another council. I assume down the road who's, who's take this up. Many of them. Many, yeah. yeah. There's be a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of councils. But, a lot of councils. My, but my point though is that I think we have to be very careful that we don't inadvertently make the cost of housing even more expensive than it is in Ames. And so um, yeah. it's just a cautionary word. I think if you'll note in, in, in uh, uh, Deb's uh, overview of what we're doing here, when you're accepting this report, remember, um, Anita cautioned us very wisely that the report is a path, a path forward to reach your aspirational goal, right? But Anita's, Anita warned us a, a couple of weeks ago or months ago, how far and how fast you choose to go with implementing will be up to the city council. That determination will be made each year as we refresh your memory, somewhere, somewhere like the Ames Human Relations Commission does on what we accomplished in the prior year and what you want us out in the first year. It has to be considered a plan like a capital improvements plan, which is flexible because we try to point out there are different intervening uh, variables that will affect our implementation. One of them is the desire or affordability of some of the recommendations. How much can our citizens, our businesses, our individuals absorb if we move too fastly, right? There are issues of legality. What is allowed in the state of Iowa, which maybe is not allowed here and maybe where other states that it is allowed. Uh, opportunity is, is such. Are there opportunities for grants that might pose themselves? We don't even know of it yet, but next year there'll be a grant pop up and we may have to move a project ahead, like a capital improvements project, like we we switch, we accelerate and decelerate projects. And um, also technology. You know, we were thinking about uh, electrification of our cars maybe 10 years down the road or who knows? There may be accelerated uh, development of uh, some of our heavier trucks that we could take advantage of in the next two years, we will move quickly to, to adopt that. So remember the intervening values, uh, variables, remember how far and how fast, always understand the cost it will be uh, to our to our citizens, our businesses, and that has to do with equity too, right? We, we don't wanna make a, a, a city where no one can afford to live. It's always a balance. It's always a balance to your goals and how much you're gonna pay for it. So I think you have to take that into the context when you uh, approve, uh, excuse me, you, you accept this plan. 
These are suggestions. They're not mandates, and there's a lot to be determined yet. Steve, I think I think you were um, slight okay. misspeaking there. I've done that um, before, so go ahead. But I, I think it's um, a good example of how people confuse the words accept, approve, and adopt. Right. And we are accepting Correct. this plan, meaning it's been delivered to us, mm -hmm. and we're having a discussion about it, but we'll be voting on whether to accept it or not. Yes, and I would want to devalue it by accepting it. You appreciate the, the paths that are, have been laid out by this consulting group. They've showed us ways to go and probably the most cost-effective ways to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, so accepting it is not that you're ignoring it. You're not going to take into account, but you will have to define your own path forward based on those intervening variables. And I think with this, too, it's fair to say there'll be a lot of exploration. There are a lot of things out there we don't know. We've learned a lot throughout the process, but there are more things out there that we don't know. So there is an exploration part to all of this as we look at the action steps and the big moves. And I was just going to say that it's important to keep in mind, too, that um, as we've said before, that not doing anything also has a cost. And so we want to continue to think about what are those smart moves that can continue to move us forward uh, in this plan that will put Ames in a good position, so. Council, do you have other questions before I turn it over for uh, public input? If not, I'll open the floor for public input. If you have input to give, but have also sent us an email, please remember that we have read the emails. So we can confirm that we know what you have to say. So three minutes. And uh, when you come up, please introduce yourself and give us your address. Jerry's interested in speaking. Yes, I'm interested in speaking. Jerry Neal, 916 Ridgewood Avenue. I think um, my comments will be about just being human. So our human brain is wired one way. Immediate danger, threat, and response. That's how we're wired. That's how our brains work. So when you run into a huge long range kind of problem, it's, it simply doesn't ring our bells. So the work of putting a cap together um, and putting one in place for aims that is to be celebrated. I mean, because this is hard work <laughs> and it's really hard to justify, right? So to that point, the atmospheric carbon on earth has ranged from 172 to 300 parts per million over the last 1 million years. And that means that Earth cycled through like cold glacier periods and the warm interglacial periods and into the last 70 or 80 years where it's been relative, relatively stable. That's what we've been living in, 80 to 90 years of stability, um, all within that range. Um, the CO2 level in the atmosphere yesterday, that's from Mauna Loa and from NOAA, was 423 parts per million. So cities have to step up, and we are. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for taking these steps forward, because they do have to happen. And I really appreciate what it's taken to get to this point. Thanks. Thank you. Others who would like to speak on this issue? If not, I'll conclude public input. Um, I don't want to move on to the vote until I recognize the enormous effort that has gone into this planning from our staff to our consultants to our supplemental ink committee, which was huge, um, and to all of those residents who've given us input one way or the other over the last three years, I want to say thank you. 
because we could not be at this point now without all of that hard lifting that's been done. So council, any further questions or comments? No, other than to second your thanks to staff and to the consultants and the supplemental input committee, everyone who's given their input on this too, um, from the community. Mm -hmm. um, it has been a long process and a, and a lot of work. And so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to thank council because I wasn't on at the point at which this started. So thank you to you all for starting down this road of very challenging work. And I'll echo that. I appreciate very much the staff's work on this. Um, uh, I have voted for every climate proposal that has come uh, before council. But in 2022, when we had the first discussion about how to set the goal. That was my first vote in dissent. And the reason why I voted in dissent is because we adopted the, the goal of reaching net zero by 2050 without having any idea of the cost of doing that. And then when we asked the consultants to bring back the cost of that, they came back and they said it would be 2.3 to $3 billion I thought the matter was resolved at that point. The newspaper had a small typographical error and said that it was a 2.3 to $3 million plan. And uh, as a result, I don't think the community really understood the full magnitude of the path the council took on. I thought at that point the matter would be resolved and it was not. And we, this council voted to move forward and ask staff to continue the work uh, to get us towards that goal. This was a financial impossibility. Uh, our budget does not allow anything in the remote area to permit that kind of expenditure. And yet we moved on. It was unfathomable to me that we would do this. Um, we now are at a point where is where we really started in 2022 that we would evaluate these proposals